Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Rob Napolitano, and welcome everyone to 2024 and a fresh new year of weekly briefings of thriving through chaos, conflict, and crisis. For those of you here for the first time, I hold these weekly sessions for one reason and one reason only, and that's to provide verified independent facts so that you can see what's going on in the world that you may or may not be aware of, and then you can make informed and intelligent decisions in the management of your assets and your wealth. Why should you take the time out to listen to me? Why are you here? You may be asking yourself, what does this guy know that would be important to me? Or you may be saying, here's another one of these guys trying to sell me something I don't need or try to feed me some bull that I don't want to hear. Let me tell you a little bit about my history. I founded Grit Partners in 2008 after going through the great credit crisis as a means to capitalize on a massive opportunity in distressed real estate debt and opportunistic insurance assets. I've originated and modified and traded over a billion dollars in transactions since 1998. Now, this was not all just sweetness and light, so let me make that clear. There were challenges, especially in 2008 when I went into my Chapter 13 bankruptcy. But I came out of that at a higher net worth because I won two lawsuits against big institutional banks. And that's when I got a real inside look as to the, how the banking system really works. And what I realized is that the average person, people like you and me, are basically flying, flying blind in investing today. And I felt a personal and professional responsibility to share that insight. To cut through the noise, bring you the facts backed by data, to empower you to make intelligent, informed decisions, and that's what these weekly briefings are going to be all about. Let's be candid here. We're in a new investing environment. Things have changed. There's a lot of change out there and a lot of noise in the world. And it creates a great deal of confusion and complexity. And with that, it brings disruptions, inefficiencies, misalignments. But with all of that misalignment also comes substantial opportunities ready to be seized upon by those that are informed, ready, with an actionable plan. And so I hope you get that from these weekly briefings. So let's go ahead and get started. I do want you to understand that I'm not in the business of making predictions. There's plenty of people out there doing that and you'll hear all sorts of predictions for 2024. I'm in the business of being prepared. I'm in the business in moving from a position of confidence and not from a position of fear. Most people out there today are acting out of fear and reacting. Here, we're going to act out of confidence because we're going to be better prepared. No one has that crystal ball. No one can tell what's going to happen. All that you can do is take experience and the signs that are out there to create a forward-looking, through-the-windshield plan to illuminate the pathway forward. And that's what we do. Most financial advisors out there are looking at data that's retrospective. And by the time they feed you that data, it's already too late. So you can't be prepared by looking in the rearview mirror. You've got to be laser focused, looking forward to the windshield. See, 70% of all financial professionals out there only address 30% of investors' needs. That means there's a vacuous hole out there of information, of opportunities that you're not being presented with. You're not being served. But the big banks and institutions, they hold those opportunities for themselves. And that's part of what I want to address moving forward in these weekly briefings. Now, to give you a little bit of a history and a track record, I have here a video that I had put together back in 2022, where I stated what the forward-looking vision was back then. And here's some of the things that I wrote down and some of the things that I put on record. And uh, let's go through the track record and let's see how I did. As you can see, the Ukraine invasion I called happened back in 2022. The advancement of central, digital, central bank digital currencies, I said, was going to happen, and it did. I also said that there was going to be a challenge in the currency, the U.S. dollar reserve currency, and China was also going to challenge a new world order uh, in the Western world. Inflation would arrive, and distressed financial instruments were going to come onto the marketplace. All mentioned back in that video back then. All that has happened. Government spending, I said, was going to increase. Fed was going to increase its interest rates. They have. Now, I wasn't right on everything. Stock market cratering and recession didn't happen in 22 and 23. Migration, what I said back then, 
was that migration was going to happen not only over our border, as it's happening today in the U.S., but also from state to state. As people want to look for different lifestyles, they want to move to people who have similar values, similar alignment of interests, and similar uh, lifestyles as well. And so they're going from state to state, finding where their people are. So I put this together, a little Venn diagram, to outline the structure in which we do our outlook and how we can illuminate a pathway forward, what the forward windshield vision looks like. And it basically is a composition of three facets of our daily lives. One has to do with geopolitics, the second has to do with technology, and the third piece has to do with finance. When we take those three parts of our lives and we overlay it together, it gives us this diagram, which gets us closer and closer to focus. Now, the cross-section between technology and geopolitics is where the warfare, warfare state exists. Now, I'm not just talking about warfare. We are seeing explosions and, and, and physical warfare, although that does exist there. And we see a lot of conflicts going on in the world today, and I think we're going to see some more. We're going to see a couple of things that are going to escalate. Even though we're in the midst of chaos now, chaos is only going to get worse and heightened and going throughout 2024. But this is also cyber uh, warfare. It's information, it's psychological warfare, emotional warfare, it's currency uh, warfare, it's biological warfare. It's all these different things that come into this that affect our lives. Now, the cross section between technology and finance is where you find constitutional liberties being attacked. And that's a lot of where the central bank digital currency is going to come into play, where they're going to create digital uh, currencies that can not only monitor, but limit some of the things we do in our daily routines, in our daily lifestyles. Uh, and the, so finally, finance and geopolitics is where monetary policies come into play. And this is where the central banks, you know, a lot of what we hear is them raising rates, not raising rates, and why they're doing it, and some of the logics behind they do and what they do. And so you have to look at that piece as well. But let me distill this down one more level. What it comes down to is currency, influence, and liberties. That's what it comes down to. Currency, influence, and liberties. And when I talk about currency, it's not just monetary currency. It's any type of currency, whether it be energy, monetary, information. There's all sorts of things we can use as a means of exchange amongst ourselves within the economy. Now, the banks they have the mantra and the mindset and operate through the lens of let's own nothing and control everything. For them, it's all about control. Let's own nothing and control everything. And so here's how we see the banks looking at this stuff. And it starts with the currency. That if they can control the currency, then they can control the influence. In the end, money talks. And if you can control the money, you can control outcomes. It's that simple. And the next piece, if you can control the influence, then you can control behavior. And if you can control the influence, then you can control liberties. And this is where we're all being attacked. It's a holistic attack on all fronts. And when you get down to the most common denominator, it comes down to currency. And this is where, if you look at what the banks are doing, you can see where we are moving to and what's coming. So with that, let me offer my 2024 navigational beacons, six of them. Here's what we see happening based on what data we already have, and that's out there. We see that the Fed is going to decrease rates. We see that because of that, government is going to increase its spending. Because of that, inflation is going to return to the citizenry and the people. You're going to see bank failures some of the bank failures is going to stoke fear into the marketplace and so that's going to trigger a stock market crater which will ultimately lead us into a recession and being that we are in a presidential election year here in the u.s that recession is going to get redefined recession is going to get redefined and so we're living in the five C's, as I said, 
chaos, crisis, and conflict, which creates complexity and confusion. But I also believe that in that climate, there is opportunity. But you have to be informed to make the right decisions about which opportunities are real and which opportunities are right. These weekly briefings will do that. They'll come from a place where you can gain, where you can gain clarity and confidence. With that clarity and confidence, you can go ahead and protect your assets, grow your wealth in a sound and efficient manner. Again, that's why I'm going to be here every week for you, Tuesday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm not going to be selling you blue skies and get rich quick schemes. But for the people that do want to put an effort in to roll up their sleeves, make a commitment to their family's generational success, those that want to put an actionable plan in place, those that want an ability to take control over their personal financial legacy. It's right here in front of you, and it all starts with education. I want to do that with you. I hear you. I want to hear more from you, and I want to help you. So with that said, if you have any questions about any of the facts that I laid out here today, contact me. I welcome the opportunity for one-on-one -on -one conversations, not to sell you, not to upsell you, do any of that, but only to be of service. So with all that, I wish all of you a prosperous day, and I'll see you next time.